guys. Welcome to Cozy Up Knits. Um, we are here with clue one. Yep, clue one of the Twin It Up Mystery Knit Along. Woo woo! So we are going to, yeah, if you're just stumbling across this, yep. we are running um, our second annual Mystery Knit Along, mm -hmm. but you can find the pattern on Ravelry. It is called Twin It Up MCAL. Um, first, I want to say, spoiler, spoiler, bleep, bleep, bleep. If you don't want to see anything of this clue, turn this off. Turn it off. However, we're not going to actually show you the finished. We're not. We're not going to show you the finished clue, but you will see bits. You will see bits and pieces of it in the, once we're done talking, there's going to be a tutorial for one of the sections. Yeah. And, um, and you will see that portion. Yeah. In the tutorial. Yeah. So. Okay. So I guess first of all. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the cast on. Okay. Uh, calls for a cable cast on. You can find great tutorials for those mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, we did not tutorial that part. Nope. If you don't want to do that or don't like to do a cable cast on, it's not a big deal. You can do a long tail cast on. You matter. can do whatever kind of cast on you want. I just liked it. We chose it because of the just the little bit of extra clean look. Yeah. Um, that flows nicely with the rest of the pattern. Yeah. But it really, like we said, it really not does not a make a difference. Um, and then my only other suggestion for that is to try to cast on not like loosey goosey but if you're a tight knitter just be conscious you don't want to cast on super tight yeah actually when you go to move your you can you can adjust you know don't snug real tight don't on snug your yarn, real tight yeah which, which would go for any cast on yeah okay so just don't cast on super tight um but it's not a huge and it's not that many stitches no nope. you'll so. see that is kind of fun yep okay so then after cast on we've got our setup row okay we got two rows of setup yep and I want to just really make mention at the beginning that you notice those threes in the bracket. Look yes. at your abbreviations. They are there. Those threes are three stitches that are part of the pattern. Yeah. And they, so they. It's easy to miss. Yeah. They're, they're included just, in mm -hmm. the stitch count, but mm -hmm. they are, and they each mean something different depending on if it's at the beginning of the row or the end of the row. So just make mention of, or make, take notice of that. Yeah. If you've done an I-cord, if you've done one of our patterns with I-cords, chances yep. are you've come across you've this, this bracketed three thing. Yeah, so we've got, um, it's in the <coughs> abbreviations, I can just say it, the three, when it's in the brackets at the beginning of the row, it means knit to three. knit three. When the brackets in the three are at the end of the row, it means slip three with yarn in front. Yeah. That is in the abbreviations. Yeah. Just want to make mention because I know... It, that it came can be up with our to, and you go miss. oh the stitch count's not right and what's happening and those three you they know, count six stitches yeah yeah all right so we've got our two setup rows and yeah you if you feel after you want to place a dingle dop or a progress keeper front side back side yep but it is very obvious the front and the back yeah it's not like it's a garter shawl where you where it could to. be either side yeah um so then we've got a couple of different sections in here and for the like what we show you in our tutorial today we just show you the third section it is called uh, mock tweed and so we actually do a tutorial on that because it's easy it can be a bit finicky well and it's wordy like the description in it it's wordy but you follow it it, it will work yeah but sometimes it just helps to see that visual to see it mm -hmm. and to see it happen at least yeah. you know that one time um so with this whole um section this whole clue um, we have a spine stitch with a marker on either side and then two yarn overs on the other side of the markers. So what we want to make mention here, and I've done this before, you know, if you, you got to really watch that your markers can flip underneath yeah. your yarn over and end up on the outside of your yarn over. So you just want to make sure that every time you hit a right side row where you're doing your yarn overs and your spine and your yarn overs, you want to make sure that your two markers only have your spine stitch mm -hmm. in the center, which we do talk about in the tutorial Sarah shows of the mock tweed. I show it very well. And I show what happens, how easy it can flip underneath that yarn over and how yeah. simple it is just to flip it back. Yeah. You just roll it underneath. Exactly. Um, but if that happens, then you'll, you know, you just got to watch. You only ever want that one single stitch yeah. in between your exactly. markers. If and there's... Yarn over extra stitches in between something has happened chances are your yarn over has rolled under yeah yeah i'd say that's probably the biggest yeah there's that and then of course we show the mock stitch the mock tweed stitch other than that you're looking at some fairly basic stitches yep um 
kind of a fun, it's a fun first clue. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so, right? It's just like, I hmm. hope so. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure they will enjoy it. Um, should we talk about that we did add a hack? Oh, a hack. Okay, yes. Okay, so Sarah's talking about the mock tweed repeat, mm -hmm. um, which we show a tutorial for momentarily. Yeah. Um, if for some reason it's just not working for you and you're getting frustrated with we it. We don't want any frustrations. No. All the hacks, people. We love mm -hmm. to hack our patterns. You'll notice in your pattern there is asterisks and you can go to the bottom for um, uh, just a way to just to modify. Yeah. And to just And it's a simple modification yeah. because you've, you will really have done it. it. Yeah. You're just going to take the, the stitch from the beginning and move it up to the middle. Anyway, yeah. you'll see that. But yeah. if it's causing you grief, we don't want that. No. So go ahead and... Give it a try for sure. Give but it a try because it's, it's not... And Sarah does a very clear... We do a very clear visual. Yes. Yeah. So give it a try before you... Um, before you don't. Before Christina, you don't, we're yeah. talking to you, our sister. Our sister. Oh, we didn't even say this. Twin it up MCAL is based on our twin sisters. Yes. If you're following along, you've heard us talk about it yeah. a million times. Or uh, if you uh, look at the, the clue itself. The clue is all... Confused, it's all about the twins. Who are these babies? Who are these babies? And <laughs> why are there babies? Did you notice the picture? They're in there. They're, I don't know who... We should ask mom who made those outfits. Yeah. So they're in knitted little Beautiful knitted outfits. Knitted outfits. That's not the, the mystery knit along. Not those baby outfits. <laughs> You're not knitting yourself. One in green, one in blue. A no, baby outfit. <laughs> that would be funny. It is a shawl. It is a, it is a, it is a three skein fingering weight shawl. Yeah. So we really hope you enjoy. I don't think there's anything else... Nope, it's pretty straightforward. I um, think it's... Yeah, you, you it's can good. see at the end, we're going to add a little fun twin fact at the yep. end of every clue or somewhere in the clue. And by the end, when you're done, sew in all your ends. It says, yep. sew, in, sew your ends. in your ends. So sew them in. We don't want any complaining that there's all these ends to sew in. Just get them done yep. in clue one and then you're done. Yeah. Isn't that nice? And yeah, just enjoy. Yeah. So following this, you will see part of clue one. If you do not want to see it, don't go any further. But if you want to see some help on the mock tweed, then... Or the yarn over situation. Yep. Then go ahead and watch that. And we'll see you next time. Next time. Next okay. week. Next week. Yay. Happy, Happy knitting. knitting. Anyways. Okay. So this is the mock tweed repeat. Um, so as with every row in this um, clue, the first three are always knit. So I'm going to go ahead and knit the first three and then we get right into our repeat. So our repeat reads and two together. So I'm going to <laughs> knit my first three and then knit two together so I don't forget because there is that decrease right at the front. Okay, knit two together and then we get right into our repeat. So we are going to slip one purl wise. Then we're going to knit one and then we are going to make our yarn over. Now with this yarn over, it wants us to now pull this first slipped stitch over top. So you have to make sure that you hold your yarn over over across your needle. Because normally when I knit, I leave it hanging down. But you have to actually hold it up so that when you pull your slip stitch over top of your next knit and your yarn over, you're getting it over top. So if this is just hanging down, it doesn't really go over. And you catch those two stitches in there. So again, we're going to slip it purlwise knit our next stitch, bring our yarn to the front, holding it onto our needle, and bringing that first slipped stitch over top of your knit and your yarn over. So slip, knit, yarn over, pass slip stitch over, knit stitch, and the yarn over. Slip, knit, yarn over, pass slip stitch over both. And you can see that it's catching both of those um, stitches in there. So you get this little line that runs across your stitches. So slip, knit, yarn over, pass slip stitch over both of those. And we're going to work that right until the marker. Slip, knit, yarn over, I almost forgot, whoops, Pass slip stitch over. Almost there. Slip. Whoops. Knit. And last one. Slip. Knit. 
our yarn over and pass our slip stitch over both to the marker. Okay, so now we are going to make our yarn over for our spine, slip your marker, knit the next one. Now right here, this is where it's very easy on both sides for your yarn over to get on the wrong side. You want to really make sure that your yarn over doesn't pass when you go to knit your spine stitch that your yarn over doesn't pass in front of your marker. It's got to pass behind it. So I always try to wrap it kind of a, as far around the back that I can so it stays in place. So there's my yarn over and there's my spine stitch. And I'll show you on the way back um, if your marker moves what to do. Okay, so knit our spine stitch. Now we're going to slip our next marker and make our yarn over. And again, just making sure that our marker stays in between the two yarn overs. All right, so we made our yarn over. Now we're ready to start the second half of the repeat. This very first repeat that you're gonna do can be a little funny. We have our yarn over, which is creating our spine stitch, um, our hole beside our spine stitch. Um, but the first stitch in our repeat is a yarn over. So we have to do it again. Okay, easy peasy. This is where it gets a little tricksy, just for this first one. So we're going to make our yarn over, and that's this second one. This was our first yarn over from our spine stitch. This is our second yarn over. So the repeat is yarn over, knit one. And now we're going to place those two stitches, the knit and the yarn over, onto our left needle. So this first one, let's grab our knit because that guy's easy. Now this yarn over is kind of, it's two wraps of the same yarn. So you just want to make sure that you only grab the first one which can be a little funny. Again, this is just, this is the, the trickiest part. I just grab it. Oops. Oh yeah, from grabbing the back. it. Oh, from the back. Oh, that would work. Okay. Now, this wrap is just sitting on this right tip. I've dropped it. <laughs> it's very easy to just drop. So A, if you drop it, you just scoop it back up and just put your finger on it, your right fingertip on it, and just hang on to it because we need this to stay here. So there's our, our stitches that we passed to our left hip. There's our yarn over here and our knit stitch here. Now the repeat reads, um, okay, so place yarn over and knit stitch onto left needle, then slip the third stitch on the left needle, this guy way over here, and we're gonna slip him over top of our knit stitch and our yarn over. Still hanging on to this other yarn over here, pulling that over top, okay, over top of both of them. So we still have our yarn over and we've got our other two stitches here. Now we're going to place those back onto our right tip. And now you don't have to hang on to every, anything because now this yarn over is its own thing. All right, so let's do that repeat again. We're going to yarn over, knit one, and we're going to place those two stitches back onto our left tip. And we're going to grab this third stitch on our left tip here, pulling it over top of those two stitches. And we're going to place them back on our right tip and continue on. So yarn over, knit one, place both of those back onto our left hip, pass this next stitch over top of both of those stitches, and place those stitches back on to our right hip. So yarn over, knit, and pass that third stitch over them back over. Oops. So yarn over, knit, and so this just makes those little lines point towards our spine, whereas on this side they're pointing, they're pointing left and these ones are pointing to the right. Okay, we're going to do this repeat until the last five stitches. Okay, to the last five stitches, then we're going to make our SSK, which is a slip 
slip, and then we're going to knit both of those through the back loop, and slip three with yarn in front, because that bracketed three at the end of every row means to slip through with yarn in front. So I brought my yarn to the front, and slip three. And that is what gives us this I-cord edge. Okay, so the next row in that repeat, and it's just two rows, is, so the first three is bracketed, so we're going to knit those first three, because that's what that bracketed three means at the beginning. And the rest of the row reads, purl to last three stitches. And then we're going to slip through with yarn in front. Okay, so we're going to get to the spine, and we're just going to look at what could happen at the spine. Whoops. I do know how to purl, guys. And this can help with any sort of yarn over near a marker. If you've got a yarn over beside a marker, this is so common. Um, this little thing that happens. So first of all, our markers should only ever have one stitch in between the two of them. That is your center spine stitch and everything else should be on the outside of those two markers. So let me just spread this out here. So you can see that our markers, there's only one stitch in between. Now when you're on the wrong side, chances are your first marker should, it shouldn't really slip underneath. But sometimes if you put your work down, this can happen. It just rolls around on itself and bam, all of a sudden, bam, bam it's on the wrong side. So if that happens, A, you can just take this marker off, purl your next stitch, and replace the marker because you know that only this one stitch should be in between the two or you just roll it back under if you're using these ones with little beads you just hook the bead and roll it back through so again sometimes they just slip right off and all that happens is it's just rolling it's just rolling around your needle and it just gets underneath that marker that bead hooks on that yarn and just scoops underneath so again we'll just roll it back underneath whoops whoops Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, so now we're going to purl that stitch, slip our marker, and we get to the marker and make sure there is only one stitch there. We're going to purl that stitch. And again, the same thing can happen here. This guy can just so easily roll underneath. All that bead does is just hooks on there as it's moving around in your bag. And now it's on the wrong side. So again, you can just roll it right back underneath. See how that bead just passes right through there because it's a yarn over. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? And we're going to slip our marker and just we're going to con just continue on purling. <laughs> I can't stay quiet for that long. I know, right? Uh, and you're going to purl. And we're going to purl all the way to the last three stitches and slip three with yarn in front. So that is the... Oops. The tweed pattern. So let's get a close up of that. Yeah, and talk quick, show quickly. It's very easy to count how many repeats you've done. Okay, by so counting the little. Um, this repeat calls for 28, I think. 28 times. So all you do is count this little line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 times so far. A couple more to go. Perfect. And someone's at the door. Thank you, Sarah. Happy knitting.